Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Now, if you watched my recent episode where we showed you how to take some spot rust off of vintage firearms, you might recognize this old girl. This is a, a kind of a rare 1895 Winchester, half octagon, extra length, 30 inch barrel in 3872. We had a little bit of rust under the fore end that we took off and showed you. And while I was working on it, I was telling you that uh, I was kind of getting a hankering to take it out and shoot it. The only problem is, I don't have much ammo for 3872 right now. And what I do have loaded up is has a bullet diameter of 377, which is the factory spec for 3872. But I've just never had much luck with any of these old 3872 spinning those very well and stabilizing that bullet. And the, the folks I know that uh, shoot a lot of 3855 in the model 1894 tell me they have kind of the same problem. And if you're, you're shooting too small a diameter bullets through these things, it's not spinning them very well, it's shaving them. And so it's leaving lead in your bore. So I don't like to shoot anything like that um, until I know just exactly what size the bore is so we can maybe cast up some bullets and size them appropriately for the gun that we're shooting through. So today, the first step in, in uh, deciding what, uh, what bullet we're gonna need and maybe loading something up and casting a few bullets, we need to slug this bore to see just exactly what the diameter is and particularly what the, the groove diameter is. And then we'll, we'll uh, try to get some bullets or make up some bullets that are just slightly larger than the, the bore here. Um, maybe a thousandth, two thousandth. So the first thing we're going to need is some uh, soft lead. You know, we'll, we'll, we're going to make a slug out of to put down this bore. We want, want like pure lead, real soft stuff. Um, obviously, hard cast lead is, is not a good choice, the softer the better. So what, what I like to use is, is some, uh, I've got some 45 caliber, just soft lead musket balls here that um, we, can, we can use to make a slug. Now there's lots of different ways to make a slug, but this is just kind of the way that I like to do it. And, and I'll show you here real quickly. Um, I, I'll take this, this musket ball and put it on a, a hard metal surface um, usually I take it over my wood stove, but my wood stove has uh, got a fire in it right now. Grab a, a little hardwood board, and you can see this one's been used that way. That's what that little lead stain is on it. Just put it down and just roll that back and forth, and then mic it occasionally. So we get it down to where it's just a little bit, maybe ten thousandths over what we would expect the largest um, diameter could be on one of these bores. And then I like to taper it a little bit. So it's, it's tapered down just a little bit on one end so that we can start it into the bore a little bit easier. Okay, so here I've got one made up here. Um, this one, we, we've got it at about 390 or so. And, and of course, we expect the, the bore um, probably is going to be in the range of about 380 or so. We've got it tapered down just a little bit so it'll start. Okay, so this, this rifle, before we started in, I, I cleaned it real well. We want that bore cleaned up really good. We don't want any, any obstructions, any even dirt or anything in there. We want to get as good a reading as possible. And then, so I, and then I oiled it up. So we've got lubrication in the bore. And then we'll take a little bit of white lithium grease uh, to put on the, on the slug itself. Doesn't take much. But we just want to have everything lubricated up as much as we can just to make it a little easier on that bore having that slug forced down through it. Okay, so we've got, got that lubed up good. Let me wipe a little of that off. And we'll set that aside for right now. We'll open up the breech. And what I like to do is put just a little bit of a, a rag in the chamber area so that when that bore goes through, or that slug goes through, we, we catch it there. So we're not just shoving it through, bouncing it off the, the breech face and onto the floor. Now I've got rubber um, fatigue mats here, anti-fatigue mats, to, to catch it too, but um, we, uh, we're just going to try to avoid that situation altogether. And also those, um, don't, don't put the butt of your gun right on a, a concrete floor like we have here. So these mats work pretty good for that too. So we're going to put that that slug right in there like that. Then we're going to grab some kind of a soft mallet. Now I, I don't think uh, or I don't like anything as soft as like a rubber mallet, but one of these with a plastic mallet, a wood mallet will work, a, a hard leather mallet will work. And we're just going to start that 
We're going to try to avoid um, beating on the crown of the gun. Now these 95s have a flat crown, but we still don't want to just pound on them real hard. These are nice old vintage guns, so we don't want to be beating on them and, and damaging that crown any. Okay, now we've got some rods about 8 inches long. Usually I only use about 3 of them, but with this 30 inch bore, I think I'm going to have to use 4 to get all the way down into the chamber area. And uh, I cut them into 8 inch pieces. I think it just uh, it, it lessens the chance that they're going to break. Now, I'm kind of fortunate with this 38 caliber that I had some 3 8 inch dowels that uh, actually measure about 350. So it's just, just perfect for, for this size. So we're going to put that right on top and, and pound it down. Getting, the, getting it past the muzzle is the hardest part. Usually it loosens up and goes a little easier after that. There, we're starting. Once you get it started, it actually goes pretty, pretty easily. We'll get that down to where it's almost there. And avoid pounding on the muzzle of the gun as much as possible. And we'll start the next one. See, it's getting, getting easier as we go now. This one actually has a, a very clean bore, doesn't have much um, in the way of, of pitting, but it's been shot quite a little bit. The, the lands are, are uh, worn down some, so it's going through pretty easily. Actually, now that we're getting down towards the bottom, it's going through real easily. We can do it by hand. There, it went through. Okay, so now we've got a slug to measure. Let's get it out of here. Actually, well, I'm going to pull that last rod out. See if we can get this slug out without dropping it. Okay, so now we can set this rifle aside. <laughs> and here we are. We've got a nice shiny slug that we can measure now. So we're going to get our glasses on first so we can see what we're doing and we're going to measure of course this is a mirror image of the bore so we we're interested in what the the groove diameter is so we're going to orient it so that we can measure this um, on the high spots that are across from one another and I'm, I like to turn it and measure them all the way around this one I've gotten 379 and a half, 379 again, 379. So we're we're real consistent with 379, and that, that's a really about what I expected. Um, in fact, I'm very happy that it came out 379. I like to go about one thousandth over, and I've got a sizing die for 380. So. That should work out just about perfectly. Um, and, and so we, we know that the 377 bullets probably wouldn't have shot very well through this particular rifle. So we're probably just going to pull those bullets. We'll cast some, some up um, and size them at 380, and that should be just about right for this old girl. Well, there you have it. It's really not a tough process to slug a bore. As long as you have a few of the right tools and components, uh, a little bit of know-how, um, really pretty simple to do, and it's really valuable, especially if you do your own reloading, to know just exactly what, what your bore size is so you can select or make your, the right size bullets. Now, the next step in the process, we're going to fire up this master caster and see if we can't drop a few bullets um, and then size them up at 380 since we found this was a 379 bore uh, in this rifle. I've got some, some molds here for a 3855 that I'll think will just work beautifully for this 3872. So uh, next step, we'll drop those bullets, get them sized up, and then we'll take them in and uh, see if we can't get some, some rounds loaded up and take this old beauty out and shoot it. So until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.